All righty. We're going to give just a minute because it takes a while to connect and let people know that this is happening. <laughs> so we'll give people a minute to tune in. All righty. Hang on too. Let me let me pull up these uh this here so I can see the comments as well so I can follow along with your comments. Um, hang on, let me get there, guys. Well, one person, one person operation here. Here we go. All righty, there, there. I've got it pulled up so I can uh, see your comments as people tune in, and we'll give everyone just a second to trickle in here because the live gives that notification. Um, awesome. All righty. So I've got this here. So I've, I've got us up in multiple places. Thank you for tuning in this morning. I am really excited to be um, sharing some of these announcements with you. I've got, I've got some big news, but um, we'll just give just a second. Uh, as people are connecting. Oh, I see we've got some of you here now. Okay. Um, hey, no puppy dog, not right now. And I may have to go let him out. So let me put him outside. You want to come with me to put him outside? Let me put him outside. Because otherwise he's going to be like, I have to pee the entire time. And that won't be very good. Because he's a big dog. And we don't want him to pee in the house, do we? Hang on just a second. Awesome. All right. I'm going to set you guys down here for a minute. Come on, puppy dog. All right. Come on. All right, go buddy. All right. Awesome. We've got people here now so we can jump in. Oh, good morning. It's early. And earlier I tried to ask him to go out and he was like, no, I refuse. I don't want to get out of bed. And, uh, well now, of course, as soon as I start the live stream, he needs to go out to pee. So, you know, what are you going to do? He's a dog. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, you know, the, the re the reason that I've been here is I wanted to share and um, talk about change. Good morning, guys. Oh, I see some familiar faces. Yay! Um, and before COVID started, I had been working within businesses uh, to provide training and coaching and consulting in the areas of neurodiversity in the workplace. Uh, and lots of things were different before COVID, as we all know. Um, I had flights booked, you know, from March to November, um, you know, and then the world really changed. And, you know, two weeks after it really hit here, all the, all the flights started canceling and things went virtual. And we've all been Zooming <laughs> and using Google Hangouts and uh, Microsoft Teams and all of these virtual tools to connect. And I feel like I've actually had the opportunity to now become a Zoom expert, which is great uh, because that is, you know, how we've been delivering trainings. Those trainings that didn't cancel and that did move forward all went virtual and went digital. And a lot of things have gone digital. I'm, I'm really excited about all of the things that have gone digital, you know, healthcare going digital, mental health services going digital. Um, these are all really good things. Thanks for the captions. I know I told Facebook I wasn't gonna go live again until they gave that to me. So I'm here because Facebook fixed it. I have captions on my live videos. I stopped doing them because they weren't accessible. I'm still gonna, download it and try and scribe it after this to make sure the captions are correct um, because it's you know it's live captioning it might be fallible um, and I'm also going to try and remind myself to speak slowly so let me remind myself to slow this down a bit because I um, I move quickly I can be all over the place so whew, and that'll be hard for people to follow and hard for the captions to keep up um, so, you know, there, there have been lots of changes happening, rapid changes, constant changes happening over the past 
several months since March. And, you know, businesses have changed the way, I, like I said, the way we deliver training has changed. Um, and, you know, some days at the end of the day, I feel like, you know, I say I'm a Zoom zombie because I'm just like brain dead from being on Zoom after Zoom after Zoom. Um, and, you know, as an autistic person, I myself struggle with change. Uh, and the thing about that that some people don't understand is I struggle with change, even if it's a good change. Sometimes I can have difficulty with that. Does anyone else relate to that? Like, do you have, like, even if you're going through like a good change and a change you want to go through, it can be really hard on me. And I mean, that, that's how it might've been my experience is just, I change is really difficult even when it's a change that I want. Um, and let me see, I've got comments, yes. Oh, the captions, yay. Okay, guys, I'm so happy we finally got these captions. Um, so hopefully if they work well, we'll do more live videos as long as they're, they're working. Uh, and part of that is me speaking clearly. <laughs> um, I'm reading comments too. As we go, I wanna make sure if any questions pop up, I get those. So thank you guys. Um, so, you know, this week I have been processing very sudden news that had a large impact on my life. And as of Monday afternoon, um, I am no longer employed full-time. Uh, I lost my full-time job due to COVID. And the initial reaction is panic and fear and terror when you hear something like that. And at this point, you know, it's very bittersweet. Um, and I want to make sure to say that there's no ill will at all between the former employer and myself. We're all still close, uh, friends, friendly, and we're actually even collaborating on a few projects still. Uh, but, you know, the shift has left me in this crossroads. And, you know, I lost something really wonderful, uh, but I really hope to build something even better. So I'm trying to remain optimistic. Guys, no, don't, no, no. I don't want sorries. No, there, no, there's no sorries here. You know, we're, we're at a bridge. Um, you know, there's a, well, actually, let me, let me say that before I get any more sorries. Has anyone ever heard the phrase, be careful what you wish for? I feel like I've been asking the universe for more time to work on helping with autistic issues like literally just, you know, a few days and the day before, and then this happened. And I couldn't even help but say, okay, well, you know, it sounds like those, those prayers have been answered. Right. Um, and the reason I say, don't, don't say sorry is, you know, this is the first time I've, I've ever lost a job. Um, like normally if I lost a job, I would, I've only lost last time I was laid off was in 2008 when we had the, the last crash. Um, and normally losing a job, I would feel just overwhelming anxiety. Um, but that was the knee jerk reaction at first. But now that I've had time to process the event, uh, and really look over things, um, I'm actually feeling surprisingly hopeful and even excited about the potential for this change. Um, and it's scary. It's, it's really scary, but, uh, you know, sometimes you need a little nudge or a little push or someone to like rip the bandaid off to force you to act or to do something that you've kind of wanted to do but hadn't done. Um, let me read comments really quick too, because I want to make sure I, I read comments. But you know, I, I'm determined right now. I'm really determined 
uh, to push myself harder than ever. But also that said is a big part of this is realizing um, I am a recovering workaholic who tries to overwork to compensate or bury themselves in their problems. And I have neglected people and things in my life when I am so much buried in my work or so overly focused on work. So a big part of this is not, you know, wanting to work a million hours a, a week um, so that I can have better mental and physical health and time with the people uh, in my life that matter to me. Um, because I, I see them all from a distance and when all you do is work, you don't ever, you know, you don't have a lot of time for anything else. And I tend to be all or nothing. And that's like my own thing. It's like when it's like I go to work and then I stop and go do neuro rebel work. It's like I created a whole nother job on top of a job. So I've had these two jobs for a really long time now. Um, and it's a labor of love. Uh, and I really love doing the neuro rebel work. And that there's been a lot of things I've been doing offline for a while that I haven't even shared on social media because I've just kind of been buried in those things, just buried in doing the work. And the best stuff is the things that nobody even hears about, honestly, the things that are off social media, that's the most rewarding. Let me see, let me read comments here for a minute. But I'm, I'm feeling very encouraged. I may have to go get the dog too. Hang on, let's, let me go grab the dog and look at comments at the same time. Let's go grab him, he's barking. I don't know why he's barking. I hear him, burp, 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 burp. he's having a fit. Okay, Let's not blind you guys with that light. Okay, let's get the doggy. Come on, buddy. Let's go, Dust. Come on, baby. Good boy. Oh, my baby. Hug the dog. Okay. Oh, loud noise. My apologies. Get that back up for the light. Okay. Maybe a little quick tour of my living room slash kitchen slash everything room because you know it's an RV. Actually I'd give you a tour another day but I did not tidy up enough beforehand to give you a tour and I didn't get up early enough today. <laughs> I was not feeling great last night physically and I didn't sleep well. Maybe it's the moon. We had a full moon. It was beautiful. Anyone else love the moon? Okay I'm reading comments now. Give me a second to catch up. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, let me to change this rough. Yeah, it's, and see, I, I know the person I am when I'm overwhelmed, and I don't want to be that person. I don't want to constantly be overwhelmed. I have had a really bad habit of always operating just barely on that edge of burnout just like just right there and so that means I'm constantly like tipping over and burning myself out and pushing myself to making myself sick uh and or being overwhelmed and then I'm not even I'm not even a oh, wrong way I'm not I, I'm not even a pleasant person to be around when I'm overwhelmed so I don't I don't want to be I don't want to be that way. I want, you know, reading, reading, reading. You got this. Oh, you guys, you guys, hey guys, y'all are so sweet. You're always supportive. I knew you, you know, I know, um, you guys would be supportive. Uh, but I also have announcements and I promised there would be, uh, announcements today. Right. So, let me, I had to pull that back up because it went to sleep. Uh, so let me get to the announcements here. I've got my notes uh, and I've gotten a bit rambly. Uh, I, I've gone off script. Ooh, dangerous thing to do. I've gone off script, but uh, so I had heartfelt feelings. <laughs> I have feelings, all of these feelings. Um, so announcement number one, uh, I, I am still going to be working with businesses to deliver autism and neurodiversity related trainings uh, via Zoom uh, while we're still under all of this uh, COVID. Um, so, broadcast interrupted. Is that, that's not true. You're still here, right? 
G give me a give me a wave. If, okay, we are still here. It's, I was like, what? It doesn't say broadcast interrupted. Okay. So anyway, I I'm still going to be working with businesses to deliver autism and neurodiversity training, um, and we'll, I'll be doing that via Zoom as long as COVID is a thing. Um, and I've already got some collaborations coming up with other neurodivergent uh, people for, to bring some quality trainings, actually starting. I've got a couple coming up in November, so we're jumping right into it. So more details about those will be coming, so be sure to uh, subscribe to the Facebook page so you catch the information about those events uh, and be out the, on the lookout for more of those opportunities. I think we were lining some up from November all the way through maybe February. So I'm excited about that because really teaching is where I'm in my happy place. You know, when we, when we're doing things that we enjoy, it kind of recharges us and it is good for the soul, right? And so teaching and a big part of teaching for me, because I'm a writer, is writing. So I get to write the whole thing and then organize it in a way that makes sense because it comes out of my brain like in a way that probably doesn't make sense to everybody. Uh, and then putting it together and sharing it with the world, uh, that is so relaxing to me and I have fun doing it. So. I want to keep doing that and I'm going to keep doing that. Um, and so that, that will continue. Uh, and let me, let me read comments cause I've got more comments coming in here. Um, so that, that's something to know, like I'm still going to be working with organizations to do training. I'm going to work with some companies, uh, to do training that is uh, available for purchase to the public. Um, I'm going to be maybe trying to figure out a way to host some training on my website as well. That'll be available, um, you know, to access easily for people. Um, and of course, you know, I'm going to keep uh, doing more free content on the, on the blog and the uh, Facebook page and social media. Uh, now that live stream has, captions and they seem to be working uh, maybe we'll do these live streams more frequently as well um here because it's all about helping um and so you know i wanted more time to help so that's where i've got to put my time um and then uh announcement number two i wish i had like sound sound effects um and i'm really excited about this one uh, is I'm going to be starting this fall, not just yet, because I've, I've got some projects I'm working on that I need to finish off through um, October and uh, mid-November. Uh, but this fall, I will be taking on a very, very limited number of one-to-one -one life coaching and career coaching clients. Uh, and, you know, I've been coaching autistic and neurodivergent individuals for the past year, and I've really loved working one-to-one -one and helping others. Uh, and so I would really like to help more people in the future. Um, but obviously, I, you know, I am one person, so there is a limit to the capacity that I have to do this. Um, so stay tuned because there will be more details and information about the one-to-one -one coaching coming soon. But that, as I stepped out of my full-time role, uh, that was one of my favorite things that I was starting to do and I want to continue doing it. And so I don't see any reason I can't continue doing that on my own. So yeah, I'm excited about that because it feeds my soul. And that's what I'm saying. This whole thing is about, I'm gonna try and do more of the things that meet two conditions. One, it needs to feed my soul. And two, it needs to do some good in the world, like make the world better somehow or uh, educate someone, you know, it needs to, I, so those are my two goals that I'm trying to do moving forward, um, with, with these items. So then going on my own to continue 
to do training and to help you know educate uh, and do some coaching. Uh, so those services will be provided through my website, neurodivergentconsulting.org. And that website has been up for a while. Uh, it's, you know, I was doing this before too, and I'm just gonna kind of refocus into it again, moving forward. Uh, and you can also email to inquire about training and coaching at info at neurodivergentconsulting.org. That's on my to-do list too, is that website's going to get a major overhaul. I'm going to need to do some updates in the WordPress. So that's coming soon. So let me read comments because I saw some comments popping in too. And I do have one more announcement if you guys want to stay tuned for that. But let me, let me read your comments. Hey, I have, I have to have one task devoted to one day. And if I try to do too much, I burn out fast. See, and that's the important thing for us to realize that we all have different limits. Um, and even my own limits has changed throughout the years and day to day can be different. You know, when I was younger, um, in my twenties and in my late teens, especially, I feel like I could physically and mentally take on a bit more than I like, like I need more rest time. I need more downtime now as I'm getting into my thirties. Ginger ale. Oh. I have a thing for ginger. I love ginger ale. Mm. So, you know, we, we, we all have different limits. We all have different thresholds for what we can do. Uh, and, you know, we need to learn what those limits are and, you know, teetering on the edge of burnout for so long, uh, it's not good. Um, edge is not survivable. I'm not sure how to not live at or over that burnout line. See, and I realize I do this and live at that line for... Like I've known for a couple of years, that's what I've been doing. And I felt it because I was diagnosed autistic because I was burnt out and I was having physical and like mental health symptoms from the burnout and I was unwell. And so I was diagnosed because of burnout. So I've known since, you know, that was four years ago. I was diagnosed a little over four years ago now. And then I started the blog. And started learning here with all of you. <laughs> it's been four years. Um, and you say, you know, you're not sure how to not live at or over the burnout line. I don't know if I would have made the decision on my own. Someone ripped, you know, the bandaid was ripped off and here I am. And now I'm trying to say, okay, well, I'm not going to work more than this many hours a week and I'm not going to work on weekends. It's, I know since I'm so all or nothing, it would be really easy for me to just work 24 seven, seven days a week, especially doing something I really love. Um, but that wouldn't be healthy. Uh, it might be more healthy for me because I can do those activities longer than I can other activities because they would charge me and bring me joy. But it wouldn't be healthy for my relationships, for the people I care about. Um, you know, I've got loved ones and grandparents and, um, you know, people that, you know, if you don't see them, you'll regret it later. Uh, and anyway, shoulder distracting, it hurts. Um, anyway, so, you know, those things are important. Okay. Scrolling, reading the comments. I'm so, uh, it sounds like the captions are doing well, which is good. I'm really excited because I wanted those so badly. Um, and I, I told Facebook, I really needed that. I'm really glad to have found you where I live for support for neurodivergent and individual adults is almost non-existent and people are way too apathetic to care. That's really sad, but it's 
this is this is what's even worse is this is really common. There's a very big lack of support for adults almost everywhere universally because services tend to be really focused on children. So I'm glad you're here too. I'm glad you're here too. <laughs> but this is you're you're bringing up actually a much bigger problem that in general we don't have uh, the support for adults. And that's why so many of us are, I think, out here we blog and we share when we get online because, you know, that's why I did it. Because when I was diagnosed, I went online to try and find something, some information, some support. Where do I go from here? What's next? And I, there was nothing. There was the blue puzzle people, which is just horrible gloom and doom. And it's all really for children. Well, four years ago, it was different, but things were worse four years ago. But then it's all just medical gloom and doom. It's all terrible. There was no, like, there were autistic voices out there, but when you Googled them, you couldn't find any of them. You, It was so hard to actually find autistic people. It was so annoying, and it was like, there's no help. I don't know what to do. Um, and that's the problem. Like, they're, you know, you're diagnosed, and you're like, you know, what's next? Uh, congratulations. Figure it out. Read a book. And actually, that's the best thing the person that diagnosed me did was recommended I read books by auti autistic authors. My words. It's early here, and I've got back-to-back -back video calls all day. I'm keeping myself busy, y'all. Don't, don't worry about the rebel. The rebel will be fine. The rebel is charged. The rebel is excited. I'm talking about myself in the third person. I don't know. <laughs> That's a new one. Uh, comments. Jude! Jude, see? Yes. Jude, we're going to be working together and doing training. I'm excited about working with Jude. We've got some good stuff coming. I can't wait. More more coming about that. Stay tuned. I've got a I've got a post share. I'll share something about that later today too, about one of the first ones we're gonna be doing. Uh, so that's gonna be fun. I love okay, let me read these other comments. Scrolling up. I gotta scroll back up because it goes to the bottom. You love my hair. Uh I love it too, but look this it's getting really fuzzy. It grows really fast. I'm like a chia pet. And I think it's time to shave the rainbow off. I'm so sad that the rainbow is going to go. I don't want the rainbow to go, but I've, I've, it's, it's going too long. I don't know if maybe I can cut it a little shorter and save some of it. Um, but my head is getting really prickly it's, and it's starting to touch my ear. And it's a sensory thing that I'm like, I, it's like, I see, I keep thinking there's a bug crawling on my ear, but it's like the hair touching my ear. And I'm like, Ugh, Ugh, and it's like, Oh, it's just my hair. Okay, it's just my hair. Especially if I'm outside, like it plays mind games with me. Uh, and I'm trying to, that's another thing, guys. I'm trying to spend more time outside, uh, fresh air, because I've been spending like 12 hours a day, 10 to 12 hours a day in this chair, in this corner, in this room of this RV, you know, 10 to 12 hours a day, five days a week. Um, and that's not necessarily healthy and I've got some back problems and some shoulder problems and neck stuff and it just makes it way worse and I'm kind of in constant pain from sitting so I need to like get up and move. I don't go physically go out and do training anymore because of COVID so I don't like I, I actually I can't believe I'm saying this I miss the airplanes but I'm not going to hop on one anytime soon. Um, keep into myself RV life is made for social distancing. <laughs> uh, reading, reading, reading. Oh, thanks. Nobody understands how lonely that makes us feel. And I've even been questions about my diagnosis. Yeah, because people are ignorant. People don't know what an autist... Like, people don't really understand what autism is. Like, if they've heard about autism, they've only heard, like, a very narrow... I, they have a very narrow idea because they haven't been exposed to autistic people. And it's a very medical idea. It's not a very human idea. And it's probably not an idea or a perspective that was 
uh, from an autistic person either. And that's why more of us, I think, need to like speak and to share because it's important to show the diversity in autistic people. Um, like, I wish there were more accounts that had large followings that were more diverse types of autistic people because our experiences are so different from autistic person to autistic person. And we, we all are very different people. None of us are alike, um, you know, gen different genders, races, all of that. We need more representation. Reading, reading, reading. I have my hair undercut just above my ears and I hate it when it's starts to tickle my ears. Yeah, like this is the best like sensory haircut you know, it's it's a mohawk basically. Um, I've ever had. It feels so so good, like especially when it's hot. I have really thick hair. You know, two thirds of my head is shaved right now, and you know, I still have a lot of hair. Like I could part my hair down the middle and look like I have hair, and you wouldn't know I have a mohawk. Um, my mom does my hair for me. <laughs> my mom has always done my hair for me. She's a hairstylist. She's been She's a barber stylist. She's been doing hair longer than I've been alive. Uh, I grew up in the hair salon. That's thus the the obsession with hair color. I'm actually a beauty school dropout, believe it or not. I dropped out because I only wanted to do color. And back then, people didn't just only do color. And I really only wanted to do this kind of color. Bright, because I, I touched up my own hair, like, recently. Like, I... I get, she helps me with it a couple times a year, but I do it myself in between. Um, so I'm, I'm a beauty school dropout. You come on these lives, you'll learn these little random facts about me when I go off script and start reading your comments. That's what your comments do. If you want to take me off script, throw me a comment. You'll get me off script real quick. <laughs> um, I've been lucky that I've had support for my diagnosis from early in life. That being said, I'm willing to help and assist others who have not been so fortunate. And see, that's really important, uh, that peer-to-peer -peer support that, you know, we are able to find that. And unfortunately, locally, it may not be easy to find support, especially if you're in a rural area or especially right now, people aren't getting out. Uh, and so we're turning to the Internet to connect. I feel so much better with my mohawk cut. Did I miss the announcement? There were two announcements. And I will put the replay up so you can catch what they were. And then I have one more announcement. So you, you didn't miss all of the announcements, but you'll catch the replay. <laughs> You're really late. You're half an hour late. <laughs> it's good to see you though. I'm glad you made it. Fashionably late, Robert. <laughs> all right, the autistic Avenger in the house. <laughs> Fashionably late. All right, so let me see. Okay, I think I've caught up on your comments. And then I can give, since you're here, we'll give you one of the, one of the number three, number three announcement. Um, and you'll go back and rewatch and catch the other two. I think you can rewind, uh, but I'm going to pop off soon because I have a, a call, a, a video call at 9 a.m. And I need to um, be ready, like, do mental space, be ready for that call. Um, gather my thoughts and download this video oh hey no no apologies necessary i'm glad you're here i'm glad you're here better late than never then that's that's why hey that's why it's a video we got a replay no no sweat anyway announcement number three hey you made it just in time though for number three uh, and this is why i'm only going to take a very limited number of coaching clients so robert that's it's one of the, the announcements you'll have to rewind and watch. Um, so I'm only going to take a very limited number of coaching clients because of announcement number three. Um, I had recently had to take a pause in the writing of my autobiography. And now that I've got more free time, I do plan to start writing on the book again. Um, and because of that, I have decided uh, that for some of you, or for those of you who support my work on Patreon, Robert, this includes you because you're on there already. Um, this month through uh, October 2020, so starting this month through whenever I do get the book sent to print, uh, I will print your name in the book as a thank you to the Patreon supporters who are helping make that possible. Uh, so that that's actually 
a two-part announcement that's relevant to you. So um, glad you made it for that one. So anyone who wants to support on Patreon, I'll link that in the comments or add it to the video description after the live stream. Um, and like I said, you know, I do still plan to make free and educational content for the blog and social media pages. Hopefully I will be doing even more free and educational content as I focus on making this what I plan to focus on full time all day, every day. Um, and so let me see, there's more comments coming in too. Uh, so let me see if there's any other questions. Okay. Oh, this is a good one. So I'm glad I paused to read this. Um, so how do you feel about self-diagnosis? Wasn't a thing that was recognized when I was a kid. Now I don't have insurance. <laughs> so honestly, for a lot of autistic people, self-diagnosis is that first step, uh, and you know, I call it self-discovery instead of self-diagnosis. Uh, and like when I write about my, you know, it's like, I, I feel like my, I, I'm actually switching from using the word diagnosed when I talk about myself. I'm trying to switch myself to say when I was discovered autistic uh, in support of those people who are unable to access the diagnosis for one reason or another, be that, you know, we're, depending on where you live, there may not be services in your area or because the services are so expensive, people may not be able to afford diagnosis. They may have trouble finding people who diagnose adults or who are aware of adults. Uh, it's, and so, you know, I think people, we know ourselves very well. Um, and, you know, it's great if you can access that diagnosis, but I feel like the fact that I have a diagnosis, it shouldn't be a privilege. It should be, you know, a right for people to have access to that. But the fact is, I feel like I'm very privileged to have been diagnosed at all. I feel like I'm very lucky. You know, I had insurance at the time, um, but even then it's still like there was deductible and it still was, you know, not, but it was luck. There was luck there and there was like access because there were doctors who understood diagnosing adults. Um, and I feel very blessed and very fortunate. But, you know, there I've heard people saying even in parts in the UK, there may be waiting for like two or three years on the wait list to get a diagnosis. Um, and I was fairly sure when I first read and started seeing autistic voices, like 90% sure that this was correct, but I second guessed myself by nature and wasn't ready to tell anyone else uh, or, you know, I w until I had somebody confirm it for me. That's just something I felt I needed before I could actually share it with anyone because I just, you know, I don't know, you gaslight yourself and to not, not believing, but you know, I knew before I was diagnosed, I just, I needed that confirmation for myself and I'm lucky to have it, but it's not something everyone will have. Um, so I, I have solidarity uh, to those who are self-discovered or self-proclaimed autistics. And I don't actually even think that's controversial. I think that's pretty uh, accepted from what I've seen, uh, I've done a poll. It's been a while since we've done a poll on Twitter, but I feel like it was pretty high in favor. If anyone's good at searching Twitter, if you can find that poll about asking autistics if they support self ID, um, cause I'm not that good at searching through Twitter and I tweet too much. <laughs> I tweet too much. I don't even know how, how to find that one. Um, but it, it was interesting information because I think there were hundreds of people in that, in that poll. Um, so uh, let's see, so let's see. Anyway, I'm I caught up on the questions. Yes, yes. So, you know, all of that I said, you know, I, I'm feeling very optimistic. I'm feeling excited. I'm feeling hopeful. I'm feeling enthused, um, but you know, I can't do it alone. Uh, the blog has been made possible thanks to the help of readers and viewers like you. 
And whether that is, you know, sharing your thoughts on one of the posts and engaging like we're doing right now, like, thank you so much for that, you know, or hitting like or hitting share. Uh, those things are extremely valuable and help power the blog. Um, or even, you know, those of you who are subscribing to my extra content, you know, uh, thank you so much, you know, for being here. You know, you guys are really helping power this engine. Um, and you're, I wanted to really sincerely thank you for being part of my world for the past, you know, four years now, because really the blog's kind of just turned four. Um, and, you know, if you're wanting to subscribe uh, to the extra content, uh, there's a few ways you can do that. One, uh, I am on Patreon and the Patreon subscribers, uh, they gain early access to most of the videos, uh, as well as announcements, sneak peeks, uh, and some BTS of my current projects. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a pay what you can subscription that starts at a dollar a month. So super cheap and everyone gains access to the same benefits regardless of the subscription level. And I think now you can actually subscribe annually. So it's like $12 a year or less uh, to jump in there and get extra access to that content. Um, and then on Facebook, Facebook just unlocked the thing. And if, you, if you're a Facebook user and don't want to go on to a new platform, you can gain early access to most of the videos, uh, the NeuroRebel videos on Facebook as well. And the Facebook supporters have access to a private NeuroRebel supporters Facebook group. And once I reach 25 supporters on Facebook, uh, I'm going to start doing uh, live streams in that private Facebook supporter group as well. Now that we've got captions, I'm so happy about the captions, guys. Um, and you can also, you know, check me out on Zazzle if you want to get some of my my t-shirts and my art thingies. Uh, I'll I'll put a link. To, I'll put a link to those in the description so you can find them. Um, but you know, really, the easiest way to support my work is share the videos and the content because really I always need help getting the word out. Um, guys, thank you again from the bottom of my heart for being here. Thank you all for your support and encouragement over the last four years. I am truly grateful for each and every one of you. And I'm excited for what we are creating together. And, you know, we will talk again soon um yes guys thank you all so much uh let me hit the end button and we'll talk to you later